Hi everyone, Cody on here, and welcome back to my lab. So, you'll never guess what I found today. Anybody recognize this? It's a two liter bottle, pressurized with carbon dioxide, and I've got about a cup of honey in there. I made this thing several years ago. In fact, I made a video with it. We were mostly just playing around with a school's camera at the time, but uh, this ended up becoming one of my more popular videos, at least back then it was. And I thought, well, let's do an update on it. First of all, let's uh, get rid of this dust. It's got dust on it. It's been sitting for quite a while. There we go. Should we open it? See if the honey's carbonated? Oh, <laughs> it's hard to open. <laughs> that is sealed tight. I have to like pierce the bottle. There we go. There it is. It's depressurized for the first time in several years. Yeah. I don't notice anything weird yet. Let's uh, see if I can get a little bit of it out of there. You notice the honey is actually crystallized with its age. Let's see if that's actually caused it to be like pop rocks or something. Here, just a test. Let's uh, put some of this down into this hot water here. Zoom in. Let's see if any uh, CO2 bubbles come off as the crystals dissolve. All right. Uh, a couple little bubbles. You know what? I don't think it's really carbonated. There's a few bubbles coming out of there, but that might just be like because it's trapped between the crystals. Well, let's uh, at least try some here. Hmm. That's some good honey. Doesn't seem any different for being stored under CO2 though. Perhaps there's just not enough water in the honey for the CO2 to be dissolved into it. At least not at the pressures that I had it. So you know what? Let's actually put this under a bit more pressure. So I've got a glass tube here. One end is sealed. And I've got some honey. You guys can probably guess that I'm going to be sealing this honey inside of a glass tube along with some carbon dioxide. And we're going to make it to over a thousand PSI. So this ought to be rather interesting. Okay, that looks like about two milliliters worth of honey. Let's see if we can get it in there without uh, making the sides of the glass all sticky. So there we go. I've stretched the glass. The honey's in. I've got a cup for the nitrogen. Now all I need is the CO2. So I have some diluted honey in these jars here, which is uh, being fermented. And this one over here is still producing lots of CO2. What better source of CO2 for carbonating honey is there than actual honey, which is producing CO2. Looks like to me that'll be just enough to do it. Right there. Now to condense the CO2 using liquid nitrogen. So this volume shrinks down and fits inside the tube. Is the glass breaking? Oh no, it's the honey. Okay. That's fine. Alright, it's sealed. Hopefully it holds. I'm actually going to let this thing warm up inside this pan, which has been stuffed with sawdust. That way, the sawdust will absorb the shock and it won't warm up that quickly. You know, if it explodes, hopefully this will contain it. With all the sawdust on the table, you can probably tell that that glass rod exploded. Uh, there must have been a defect in it, but I've tried again and so far it hasn't exploded, so it's fully warmed up. So now I've got some safety squints here and some gloves. And you'll also notice I'm wearing a jacket. That's to stop the uh, glass shards from penetrating my skin if it does in fact go off. Looks like it's holding together. It's actually got liquid CO2 in there this time. Excellent. So there you have it. Liquid CO2 on top of honey. It does not seem to dissolve the honey, at least as far as I can tell. 
Now I bet you it's carbonated. <laughs> I might even let this go super critical at some point just to see what it does. But uh, for now, I'm going to let this sit overnight so we can thoroughly dissolve it. I'll just kind of sit it like this so the honey can drip down to the other side. Alright, so I've got a glass of warm water here. I'm going to take the pressurized CO2 and honey. I'm going to place it inside the water so that the CO2 goes super critical. Hopefully this doesn't cause an explosion. Super critical CO2. Yeah, see there's no more liquid in there. Because the gas has reached its escape velocity. <laughs> Still a little bit of liquid up here at the top. I'm gonna put it in upside down for a minute. So that's honey inside of a vessel with supercritical CO2 at over a thousand psi. And in case you're wondering, I do know what the thousand psi because that's what the critical point of CO2 is. I know that more accurately than any pressure gauge could tell me. I don't really see any major differences. It's just kind of slowly flowing down to the other side just like you'd expect honey to do if the vessel was empty. even though the gas around it is about half the density of water. <laughs> I wonder how much of the honey is actually dissolved into that. I guess we'll find out here in a little while. So I've let the honey drip down to the other side. It's also cooled off a bit so you can see there's liquid CO2 in there again. Now I'd love to just pop off the top of this and then let the uh, honey and everything decompress and watch it uh, do whatever it's going to do. But uh, unfortunately, popping the top off of this is not going to really be possible. If I just scratch this even a little bit, it'll probably just explode because it's under so much stress. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cool this thing down, just kind of iteratively starting with ice water, then I'm going to go to liquid nitrogen to solidify the CO2. So this step should actually bring the internal pressure down into a vacuum. So we should be able to actually see how the honey decompresses without even opening it. Hopefully it doesn't shatter. Oh, look at that. It's foaming up. See how it's turning white? It's got foamed honey coming out. So it did dissolve the CO2 a little bit. That's interesting, it's like... I see some bubbles forming in there and everything. It almost looks the same as the dry ice. Except it's... styrofoam. Made of honey. <laughs> it's cool. Literally. Alright, well... I guess I may as well uh, crack the top off since we're here and get a taste of this. That was pretty easy. Okay, so I've got it broke open. It's down to atmospheric pressure. You can see there's quite a lot of foam. So a lot of the honey has actually turned to foam already. So the CO2 has come out of solution from it. Everything that was along the sides of the container by the looks of it. And uh, this uh, piece that I'm holding here is coming out, it sort of progresses along. It doesn't all turn to foam at once, which is interesting. You'd think if the pressure dropped, it would just all go whoosh. But it, it's actually acting like a carbonated soda. Like if I agitate it a little bit, it creates uh, more foam. I don't know if you were able to see that little spot there. <laughs> that is neat. Okay. I guess what's left to do now is taste it. actually has a little bit of an acidic taste to it. It's still incredibly sweet because you know, it is honey. But it's got that uh, sharp uh, acidic flavor of like a, a soda with a lot of carbonation. That's cool. Kind of tingles the tongue a little bit. So it is actually carbonated honey. Took a lot of pressure and 
time to do it, but there it is. So she didn't want to be on camera today, but I give Canyon some of this to try, and she said that it resembled Pop Rocks but without the crackle, which is, I think, a very good way to describe the flavor of this. It is really sweet, but it's also got that tangy zest of the carbonic acid. It also produces a little bit of gas, but of course the gas is not really confined in a sugar crystal, and so it just kind of expands slowly rather than popping. So there's carbonated honey. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.